We get a warning in Isaiah 8 verse 12. This is what it tells us. It tells us, do not call conspiracy everything that these people call conspiracy and do not fear what they fear nor dread it. God wants us to focus our attention on what is good. He wants us to be wise to what is in his word and simple to what is evil. So I wanna challenge you as we go into this word, what are you eating off of? Are you eating off of the table of life? Are you eating off of the tree of good and evil? Let's talk about it. Be careful that you are not pursuing your own. Be careful that you are not opposing a move of God. Be careful because in the last days, the Bible tells us that if it were possible, even the very elect could be deceived. But praise God, it's not possible for those who are filled with the Spirit of God because the Holy Spirit is going to give us discernment. The Holy Spirit is going to keep us from believing a lie. The Holy Spirit is going to lead us to all truth. And it starts with the Word of God because this has to be planted and rooted in us so deeply um, that this is our reference to. This is our blueprint. This is our guide. This is our tree of life that we are supping at, okay? We want to be careful. I keep saying this, not to eat off of the tree of good and evil, the tree of conspiracy, you all, because while there are truths in it, it is mingled with a lot of deception. And while it can make you think, the enemy wants you to think you're so wise, you're on top of it, you know so much. God is the supplier of all of your needs and he can tell you, he can give you discernment. You don't need to go down that rabbit hole. I promise you, right? The Bible says, be simple to what is evil, but be very wise to what is good. So let's keep eating from this table, okay? I know it's tempting. But don't go there because there's so many distractions in this hour that try to get our attention. And I have to say, Lord, help me. I, I am getting distracted. I am getting pulled away into this. This seems like, you know, I can see how people could think this, right? But then it always goes back to, what do you say, Lord? keep me from being deceived in this hour we all have to pray this prayer guys each and every one of us lord help me not to be deceived by something that looks so right but it is so wrong come on y'all earlier this year the lord had me look at the different divisions of the armies do you all remember that i'm going to try to link that video while well, i studied about the green berets the marines the air force um the navy seals it was quite fascinating i was like lord why am i studying about all of these units of the army but he told me that these reflect what we have in the spiritual army of the lord and we have to be very careful that we're not pursuing people that are actually on our side and we're causing friendly fire, okay? There are people that God sends into the secular world. There are people that God sends into the darkest places where we're like, why are they there? They may look very compromised, but they are undercover. There are things that God does not reveal and expose, and they can't even reveal their assignment because if they did, then they would out themselves. We've got to trust that God can judge his own servants. We don't have to judge God's servants. He is very capable of exposing who he wants to expose and revealing what he wants to reveal. Our job is to keep in the word of God, to keep our eyes on him, to go out there and win souls for the kingdom of God by telling everybody about the good news, telling them about the gospel, how God is good, testifying about God as much as we testify about what is wicked in this world. Some of us can get so caught up. We know so much about what is wicked, what is wrong, what is evil, 
but we're not sharp when it comes to what is good. And this is what's going to lead people to repentance. The Bible said it won't be conspiracies that lead people to the goodness of God. He said it will be you telling them it is the goodness of God that leads people to repentance. And the enemy is hoping that we get distracted about things that don't even matter, that truly don't even serve the kingdom of God. And he is hoping that we will take the bait of offense and that we will do his job for him and that we would go around attacking one another instead of praying, instead of interceding for other people. We have actual believers that have bought into the deception that it is okay to attack another brother in Christ. It is never okay to pursue your brother. You know, if you have a problem with your brother, the Bible says go to them. How many of us are willing to go right to our brother and share our grievances with them and not the world, not with Facebook, not with social media, not airing out everything like that, but we go to them. Let me show you something in 2 Samuel chapter two i love this chapter because it talks about <laughs> why are you pursuing your brother you have these two tribes you've got the tribe of benjamin and you have the tribe of judah house of saul house of david they are in fierce battle with one another there's a lot of competition going on but they're all in the house of israel so they want to see who's the toughest right who's got the strongest men and so they go at it men are dying left and right for no reason y'all why just to see who is more stronger who competing with one another and it's leading to their death and so now you have two strong groups of men that are under the umbrella of israel under the nation and yet they're attacking one another and they will soon see it benefits no one. Let me read it to you. It says in verse 21, and Abner said to him, turn aside to your right hand or to your left and lay hold on one of the young men and take his armor for yourself. But Ashel would not turn aside from following him. So Abner said again to Ashel, turn aside from following me. Why should I strike you to the ground? How should I face your brother Joab? You see, Abner was a very skillful warrior. He's like, look, stop pursuing me. This isn't going to end well for you. I'm going to take you out. Be warned. But he kept on. And some people are like that. They keep on. They keep on. They've gotten warning, but they keep pursuing their brother. And it does not end well. Abner, who was such a bright young man, so much potential, he ends up being killed by the sword because he would not stop pursuing his brother. And it tells us he fell down and died on the spot and everybody stood still because this was Joab's brother. Everybody stood still. They knew that a mighty man fell that day. And this continues. And in verse 27, it says, I'm sorry, 26. Then Abner called to Joab and said, because Joab's coming after him now, he knows, oh my gosh, this is what I tried to avoid. This is gonna be all out war, right? But this is what he says. Then Abner called to Joab and said, shall the sword devour forever? Do you not know that it will be bitter in the latter end? How long will it be then until you tell the people to return from pursuing their brethren. And Joab said, as God lives, unless you had spoken, surely then by morning, all the people would have given up pursuing their brethren. We have to stop pursuing each other in the body of Christ and start pursuing the enemy. Put that effort on you know, going out there, living a righteous life. Put that effort into praying as much as we talk about conspiracies and as much as we know about what's, put all of that effort into winning souls to the kingdom of God. Put all of that effort into praying. Put all of that effort into interceding. What if we did that, y'all? What if instead of looking for the flaws in our brother, what if we just prayed for them? What if we interceded for them? What if we spent much, as much time as we can get involved in all of the low chatter? What if we spent that time praying and interceding? 
for those around us. Man, let's commit ourselves to doing that because no one wins when we pursue each other. We've got to pursue the enemy, right? And I think that's powerful. And back to the special ops, just know that there are people, you all, that are in secular entertainment. There are people that look like they're compromised, but they're really not. They're out there being an agent, a secret agent for the kingdom. This is why we have to seek God. We've got to spend time with him because the Lord reveals the secret things to his friends. Be careful not to pick up your stone because you don't understand that it is a move of God. So that is my word for Wednesday wisdom. I pray that it blesses you. It's raining here in Alabama, a very rainy day where you just want to get your blanket and just be cozied up, but I've got to go into work. So I pray that you remember that you are the head, not the tail above only and never beneath. Go in there, be the light. Expect that offenses may come your way today, but you are going to show the love of Christ you're going to walk in grace and mercy. And God is so good and faithful to help you to be able to be the light that he has called you to be. Because you accept. You say yes. We say yes to Abba. We say yes to his will and to his ways and to going out here and letting the Lord use us as he sees fit. All right, guys. I love you and I'll talk to you soon. Bye.